Hello, it's Paul M6RSQ here. Although not for much longer, if my paperwork arrives in the next few days. Um, today, I received a package from Nevada, consisting of this: the Comet CTC 50M. Basically, it's a a jumper for running through a window where if you can't drill a hole then this is quite useful as I do have an external homebrew ground plane antenna which I would like to get on the air as soon as possible preferably preferably before the next FM activity contest in June so I plan to give that a go if I can although if that fails I can just take the car up on top of the hill so back to the the Comet jumper basically what you get is you get the jumper which is two plugs. I'll unscrew one of these protecting caps and I will show you exactly what you get on the ends. So it's identical on both ends, thankfully. So I'll take the cap off. These caps are come on it when you buy it. So you should get the SO239 socket on both ends, much like that. It's a thin ribbon cable like that. It's quite resistant to fatigue, but obviously it's not going to be indestructible. I've not tested it for any other issues, like um, uh, whether there's any noticeable difference in the in the um, uh, SWR. We have here a set of instructions, uh, presumably in Japanese, um, but there are English instructions. Like so. Although you could have done what I did and just simply printed this off this offer from a, a comic website. Same set of instructions on that side. I printed double sided say paper. As I always do. So not only do you get that in a and the instructions, you also should get two sticky pads and four screws now the screw holes that are actually in these are actually straight through the thing there's no way the, the water can leak into the inside and therefore you get your highest SWR problems that happens so that can't happen the only thing that it relies on you to do when the thing's outdoors is to weatherproof it not a problem because it's some um, uh, just requires a, a bead of self amalgamating tape around the connector or if you're feeling brave a bit of, bit of heat shrink assuming you can even manage to get away with doing that <coughs> excuse me so as you can again see <coughs> if you haven't seen already I have a double glazed window in the shack here and uh, obviously I can't drill a hole in the wall either so the only options I have are either to leave the window open up until today anyway, leave the window open if I want an external antenna or just not have an external antenna and have an internal one instead which I've had on for 2 and 70 for the last god knows how long uh, you should be able to see that just there that's what I've been using for 2 and 70 and it's really not good coax on it's thin and uh, SWR sometimes doesn't want to stay low enough and I think there might be a bit of feeder radiation as well. But that that's the least of my concerns really. Because there's um uh, having that in here obviously means uh, there's gonna be RF in here and that's quite undesirable. As I'm sure you well know. So I can obviously do a test of the SWR next to see what it's like before and after it gets installed. So, let's give that a try. Right, I've connected um, a 50 watt dummy load. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it at the minute. There, it's just resting on top of the soldering station. To, to the radio and the SWR meter, which are just over there. Now, what should happen when I key up this radio is set to its highest transmission power, 25 watts. Um, it's, it should. Don't know if you'll be able to see this. Right. 
the needles should now have moved. I can legally do this because it's a dummy load, it's not radiating anything, which is good. So that's 25 watts in the 2 meter band. So if I go for the same, the, in an equivalent frequency in, in the 70 stems band, again, exactly the same, doing what a dummy load should be doing. Again, obviously I can do this legally because, well, it's a dummy load, it's not radiating and eventually I'd be able to do it legally with an antenna but not right now because I've still only got a foundation. So, dummy load it is. It's rated to 50 watts so not like I'm going to kill it. Um, I've killed a dummy load before but that's a different story entirely. So, now we've tested it with the dummy load and saw that the SWR is barely moving off the stop. In fact, um, uh, if I key it up again, I can give you a reading. Whoa! And uh, doing that, I've actually just knocked the um, uh, uh, the, the the jumper off the bloody desk. Right. So, where the needles cross is where I read the meter. It's definitely well below one point. Well. Well, it's clear of 1.2, it's done at 1.1, so that should be fine. So I know the radio is doing what it's supposed to be doing at 25 watts and at um, uh, and on two and, and two and 70, so it's barely moving the thing. Right, I will plug the thing in and we'll see what happens. Welcome back again. Well, wasn't really that much of a welcome back. No, no adverts or anything in this video. Right, so, the dummy load is still in a similar place, although you can see it's moved, but, however, all that has been changed. We've got the CTC 50 just here, with that going to the dummy load. At the other end of the, of the CTC is a connector here, I'm not sure you, you can't see it actually, I'll turn the camera up a little. Is uh, another connector there, which then goes into the SWR meter. And obviously, that's where we're going to look at next. So if I pull the, it's the radio is still in the same settings as it was. Again, obviously, it's perfectly legal to do this, provided it's into a dummy load, and I'm not transmitting. Being on the air, so if I press the button now. The needle hasn't really moved. All the power's going through the CDC 50, no problem at all. Of course, the next thing I'll be doing is checking to see how well it works later. So that's it on two meters. And that's the same behavior on 70 SEMS. Again, very little needle deflection. Although there's a bit of a power loss on 70 SEMS. But I can live with that. So, now that we know that works. I can give it a proper run when it's installed and the antenna's up and there will be a demonstration of that once the antenna is complete so if you like me you have a double glazed window and you rent accommodation and you can't drill holes in the wall I would personally recommend the Comet CTC 50 there will be another video on this once the antenna's up and, and on the air most certainly and, of course, I will give a few on-air tests of my antenna as well. And, of course, if you hear me while I'm doing that, then that'll be good. I'll probably, by that time, be using a 2E0 call sign rather than an M6 call sign. Which you'd be pleased to know. <laughs> because, um, if you've been reading my blog, you will know I actually have passed my intermediate exam. But, well, I think only five questions wrong on that one. So, and that's what that's what spurred me on to actually buy the CDC CTC 50M. So, I think that concludes this video. There will be another one on the Comet CTC 50, and along with my homemade ground plane antenna, connected up to the QIT KT8900D, 
and that should be running at 25 watts because by that time I should be allowed to actually use that and uh, there will probably be a little video of me um, uh, getting my certificate from the Radio Society of Great Britain although that will probably be put onto YouTube after I've actually got my call sign so this is M6 RSQ wishing you all 7-3 and bye bye for now